بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ان الحمد لله نحمد ونستعين ونستغفر ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد نبدا باذن الله تعالى في هذا اليوم اسال الله سبحانه وتعالى لي ولكم التوفيق والسداد في دراسه كتاب الصيام نعم Bismillah, walhamdulillah, wassalatu wassalamu ala rasulillah wa ba'd We're going to begin studying on this day Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for myself and also for you at tawfiq We're going to start by studying the book of as-siyam, the book of fasting Al-siyam, nuqassim as-siyam ila as-siyam fard wa as-siyam nafil, naam So fasting is of two types That which is an obligation and that which is obligatory Usa'ti bidhin Allah ma'ana <coughs> أن هناك من الصيام ما هو محرم ومن الصيام ما هو مكروه كذلك لكن نريد الآن أن نذكر أن الصيام قسم إلى فريضة ونافلة نعم and there's also a time of uh, there there is also a type of fasting which is disliked مكروه and there's also a type of fasting which is حرام impermissible and we're going to study that afterwards right now we need to know that there's two types of fasting that which is uh, wajib obligatory and that which is recommended نعم في الصيام الفرض الصيام شهر رمضان وصيام الكفارات والنذور نعم so the fasting which is an obligation is the fasting of Ramadan number one and then the fasting which you have to do as an expiation for a particular sin and then also the fasting of a vow that you have taken نعم صيام شهر رمضان هذا واضح نعم so the month of Ramadan this is clear صيام الكفارات كأن يكون عليه كفارة يمين مثلا نعم صيام ثلاثة أيام As for the fasting of uh, an expiation is for example if you broke an, a vow or an oath you had taken then you have to expiate that broken vow or a broken oath with a fast a fasting of three days for example أو ينذر مثلا صيام يوم معين من شهر محرم مثلا نعم or a person took an oath upon himself or pledged upon himself that for the sake of Allah he is going to fast for example a particular day a person then has to fast that day so what is fasting what is the definition of fasting in the sharia so fasting in the Sharia, it is a ta'abud lillah. It is worshipping Allah, seeking closeness to Allah. So therefore, when a person fasts, the first thing he has in his mind is sincerity and worshipping and becoming close to Allah. So it is a ta'abud lillah, bil imsak. It is to worship Allah, to seek closeness to Allah through staying away from eating and drinking and all the other things which break a person's fast eating and drinking and all those other things which break a person's fast from the true sunrise to sunset it's better if you don't write for now just concentrate on the lesson then afterwards we can write later on after the lesson you can sit together and write with each other because now when you're writing then some of the pieces of information you'll miss it فالصيام لا بد له من ركنين إذا اختر ركن من هذه الأركان سقط البناء فالصيام نذكر نعم so we say that fasting has two pillars just like this building has a number of pillars and if those pillars aren't there the whole building collapses then similarly we say that fasting has two pillars <coughs> إذا الركن الأول هو النية أن تنوي the first pillar of fasting is your intention that when you fast you do it for the sake of Allah this is your intention this is the first pillar and then the second pillar is 
a person withholding or staying, or staying away from eating and drinking and all those other things that break a person's fast from true sunrise to sunset. So we're going to speak about the first pillar, the intention. There's two types of intentions in the fast, I mean a person's fasting. So you have an intention for an obligatory fast and then you have the intention for a voluntary fast. If a person is fasting an obligatory fast then you have to have the intention the night before or before Fajr if you're fasting the next day on an obligatory fast. And for the month of Ramadan, when we're fasting the month of Ramadan, it's enough for a person that when the month is about to start, you make one intention for the whole month. So for example, if today we know that tomorrow is the month of Ramadan, we can then make an intention today at night and that you're going to fast the whole month and this is enough. وكذلك يعني الآن في قضاء ما فاتهم الرمضان يعني في هذه الأيام الآن في شهر شوال أراد أن يقضي أيام أفطر فيها في رمضان فينوي قبل طلوع الفجر نعم And also let's say you're making qadha I now in the month of Shawwal you have some fasts left over to make of Ramadan so what you have to do because it's an obligation to make of these fasts you have to have the intention the night before than making up the fast the next day so therefore if it is an obligatory fast then you have to have the intention the night before before Fajr as for the voluntary fasts or the recommended fasts then a person can make the intention in any part of the day but his his reward only starts when the time he has made the intention as long as the condition is that a person hasn't already eaten something or drunk something or done something which would break a person's fast. As an example, today somebody's woken up, he comes, he prays the Fajr prayer and now later on he decides that I want to, I want to fast today, a voluntary fast. Is it correct or not? First we have to look that this, this day of fasting with regards to you is it an obligatory fast or a voluntary fast? If he says that no, this fast today, it's only a voluntary fast, then we ask him that since the time of Fajr up until now, have you eaten anything? Have you drunk anything? Have you done anything else which would normally break a person's fast? If he says no, then it's okay for him to make the intention now and to keep this as a voluntary fast. So one more time. The intention in the fast for a fast is of two types. Either the intention for an obligatory fast or an intention for a voluntary fast. So this is what relates to the pillars of fasting. The fasting of the month of Ramadan, who is it an obligation upon? Uh, the obligation of fasting the month of Ramadan is an obligation upon every Muslim. 
فخرج بهذا الكافر نسأل الله العافية والسلامة كفر أكبر نعم and therefore the disbeliever who has major disbelief he does not have to fast وعداء الإسلام يجعل لك أشياء في نهار رمضان تكون بها نسأل الله العافية والسلامة مشرك شرك أكبر أو كافر كفر أكبر حتى لا يقبل منك الصيام and the enemies of Islam they put or they make or they, they do certain things in the day so that if you do these things or if you participate in these things you then become a disbeliever from the major with a major form of disbelief كما يعني يحدث من هذه التي تأتي في في الفاج مما يسمى بالتمثليات الإسلامية وهي في الحقيقة تمثل الكفر الأكبر المخرج من الملة لأن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال ثلاث جدهن جد وهزلهن جد إنسان يأتي يمثل دور أبو لهب أبو جهل دور إبليس يسجد للصنم يحلف باللات والعزة يسب الرب يسب النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يطوف حول القبور يسجد يذبح للصنم وما إلى ذلك إذا كنت تنظر وتسمع هذا وتسكت لا تنكر ولا تنصرف فأنت وهو سواء نعم نسأل الله عافية السلام and an example of this is nowadays in some countries in the month of Ramadan they start uh, producing uh, what they call Islamic dramas or Islamic films or Islamic cartoons and in reality what they're doing is they've got an actor who plays out the role of Abu Lahab or Abu Jahal or Shaitan or Iblis or as, an, uh, as, as part of the film in terms of acting they have a person who's bowing down to prostrating to the graves or making thawaf around the grave of the dead people and things like this and the Prophet وسلم, said that there are three matters that if they are done with intent and seriousness then they are serious and even if they are done lightly or out of joke then they are still serious so this is the first condition of fasting. A person must be a Muslim. And then secondly, the second intention is al-aql, that a person ha a person has intellect, and therefore a person who is majnoon, a person who is insane, then they don't have to fast. So the fast isn't accepted from them. نعم وكذلك البالغ فلا يجب الصيام على الصغير نعم الذي لم يبلغ نعم and also the third condition of fasting is the obligatory fast is that he has to be over the age of puberty so if somebody is above the age of puberty then his fasting becomes an obligation if he's under the age of puberty then fasting is not an obligation upon him فالصغير and therefore the young uh, child are under the age of puberty then the guardian of that young child should encourage him to fast and also we also teach our children and encourage our children to fast in order to prepare them and cultivate them and train them in Obeying the good things and the commandments and staying away from the prohibitions and the bad things. Nam. <laughs> And then the next condition is al istitaa meaning somebody having the ability to fast. And therefore a person who is ill and by fasting their illness is going to get worse or there's going to be harm upon them, then the obligation isn't upon them to fast. Similar to this is an old person. An example, a person has a small cut in his finger. And if you ask him, why aren't you keeping the fast or why are you breaking your fast? You say, look, I'm ill, I can't fast. 
ليس كل مرض يمنع من الصيام المرض الذي يتضرر به المريض لو صام في نهار رمضان هذا يعذر بالصيام في رمضان نعم so we say to him that it's not every type of illness or every type of injury which prevents the obligation of fasting upon a person rather it's only that illness that if a person fasts then it's going to bring some harm upon the person and therefore we say that on that day the obligation to fast is not upon you <laughs> and also the next condition is a woman to be free from her monthly menses and also postnatal, postnatal bleeding <laughs> عاقلة بالغة مستطيعة للصيام لكن لديها حيضة ونفاس نقول لها يحرم عليك الصيام تنتظري حتى تطهري ثم بعد هذا تقضي ما فات نعم So we have a Muslim woman and she's over the age of puberty and she has intelligence and she's able she has the ability to fast but she is in her a monthly type of menses or in postnatal bleeding we say to her that um, it's not permissible for you to fast and wait until these days are over the days of bleeding and then afterwards you fast كذلك يجب الصيام على المستوطن يعني الذي في وطنه خرج بهذا المسافر لأن عند الناس ينقسم إلى قسمين مستوطن ومسافر and also the next condition for the obligation of fasting is that a person has to be resident in his country or his locality so as Sheikh Hussam ibn Taymiyyah said that the people are two types there's a person who is a resident in his locality or in his country and then there's another type of person who is a musafir a person on a journey or traveling and therefore Fasting is not an obligation upon a person who is traveling. But something which is known that this person is traveling, if he doesn't keep his fast now, then later on he has to make them up, he has to make qaba. But it's better for a person even if he's traveling that he should fast this is better as long as or with the condition that this fasting doesn't um, harm him or make him too tired why is it why is it better for a traveler to fast and not to break the fast because this is the action of the prophet and also because by a person fasting he acquires or obtains the virtue of the month of Ramadan and also fasting along with the people when the people are fasting then it's much easier. If you say to a person now, can you fast the, a whole month? He'd say, I can't fast. But when it comes to the month of Ramadan, because everybody else is fasting, it's much easier for a person to fulfill his fasts. يقول علي أيام من رمضان الماضي لم أقضيها والمرأة تقول علي رمضان لم أقضي فهذا التأخير له آفات يقتضي تراكم الواجبات حتى عجز عنها نعم and also a person in terms of delaying his fast or delaying delaying his قضاء it adds more difficulty upon a person it gets worse and worse and that's why we find more and more people that when the other Ramadan comes the next Ramadan comes they say oh I've got so many days yet to make up from the previous Ramadan from the previous Ramadan and therefore again it's better and easier for a traveler to fast in the Ramadan even if he's traveling it's better for that person so we said the obligation of the fasting of Ramadan is upon a Muslim and therefore not a non-Muslim a person who has intellect and therefore not an insane person
أن ولي الصغير يحث هذا الصغير على الصيام ونحن نأمر بالصيام حتى يعتاد العمل نعم And also the condition of a person being above the age of puberty but at the same time so this means a young child does not fast but at the same time we encourage the guardian and we encourage the children to fast in order to cultivate and train them upon fasting and good deeds الاستطاعة والقدرة على الصيام خرج بهذا العاجز غير القادر على الصيام مريض مرض يؤدي إلى زيادة مرضه أو لا يستطيع مع هذا المرض الصيام ويلحق بهذا كبير السن وكذلك الحامل والمرضع نعم and also the next condition is the ability a person has the ability to fast and therefore a person who is ill or a woman who is breastfeeding a child for example or an old person who if they fast then the harm is going to come upon them then they don't have to fast and also a woman being free from her monthly menses and postnatal bleeding and also a person being resident in a particular place and therefore we said that the person is traveling or on a journey that they don't have to fast however we still encourage them to fast now because it's easier for them so we want to now explain illness in fasting لا يقدر على الصيام أو يقدر مع الزيادة مع الزيادة في مرضه فهذا يفطر في نهار رمضان وعليه القضاء إذا كان هذا المرض يرجى برؤه أي يرجى زواله فالمرض ينقسم إلى قسمه مرض يرجى برؤه يعني يرجى الشفاء منه بإذن الله تعالى ومرض لا يرجى برؤه نسأل الله سبحانه وتعالى عافية السلام نعم so there's two types of illnesses when it comes to fasting. An illness from, what, from which a person knows or hopes that they will be cured. And also then there's another illness from which a person knows that they, they, they won't be cured. It's a chronic or a terminal illness. As for the illness, for a person knows that he's going to be cured by the permission of Allah, then it's permitted that if a person is fasting and he becomes ill, and this illness is going to prevent him fasting, or he can fast while he's ill but his illness is going to become worse then it's allowed for him to break his fast and simply make up the fast later on when his illness has gone فالمرض الذي لا يرجى برؤه او المريض مرض لا يرجى برؤه هذا يطعم عن كل يوم مسكين نعم as for the illness of a person who knows that this illness is not something that I'm going to be cured from this illness isn't going to get better it's a chronic illness or a terminal illness then in this situation a person for every day he doesn't fast he feeds a poor person a person can either feed a poor person in the month of Ramadan for every day that he's not fasting or wait till the end of Ramadan and then he looks at the number of days he has missed if he has missed 29 days then he feeds 29 poor people altogether and also similar to a person who is ill and you know there's no cure hope for this person is an old person القلب مثلا. so for example you have heart patients. أو السرطان. and also cancer. وهذا يرجع فيه في الغالب إلى الأطباء. نعم. and in terms of whether this is a chronic or a terminal illness or not, then you go back to the doctors. يقول الشيخ بن عثيم رحمة الله تعالى حتى ولو كان يعني رجعنا إلى طبيب كافر يصح. نعم. الشيخ بن عثيم رحمة الله said even if you need to go back to a non-Muslim doctor and ask him whether this is a terminal illness or not, then there's nothing wrong with this. Because in most situations, those type of doctors, even if they're non-Muslims, then generally you trust them in their expertise. And then the second type of illness, as mentioned, is an illness 
uh, from which a person is hopes that he will be cured by the permission of Allah. مثاله يعني مرض يرجع ضره يعني مثلا صنع عملية مثلا وقالوا قال له الأطباء بعد شهرين أو ثلاثة أشهر بإذن الله تبرى وتستطيع على الصيام والإشكال. نعم. An example of this is a person who has surgery or a particular operation. And the doctors or the surgeons say they they say to this person after two or three months you're going to get better. وكذلك يلحق بالمرض الذي يرجى برؤه ال ال الحامل والمرضع نعم. And similar to a person who is ill, but you know that the person by the permission of Allah is going to get better is a woman who is pregnant or a woman who is breastfeeding. فهذا يفطر في نهار رمضان ثم متى زال المرض يجب عليه القضاء فورا نعم so the, these groups of people then for them they, they don't have to fast in the month of Ramadan or they can break their fast in the month of Ramadan and then later up make قضاء make these fasts later when they are better نعم هذا ما يتعلق والله أعلم بالمرض وقلنا قلنا لابد أن ننظر في هذا المرض هل هو مرض لا يؤثر في الصيام أو يؤثر في الصيام يعني إذا صام. نعم. So this is what relates to illnesses in fasting. But as we said, we have to look that this illness in itself does it affect a person's fasting or does it not affect a person's fasting. نذكر الآن ما يتعلق بالمفطرات أو مفسدات الصيام. نعم. So now we're going to mention those things which break a person's fast or make a person's fast invalid. نعم. الأول الأكل أو الشرب عمدا. Firstly, eating or drinking on purpose. خرج بهذا ما لو أكل أو شرب ناسيا فلا شيء عليه. لكن يجب عليه ما تتذكر أن يمسك عن الطعام والشراب. نعم. And therefore, the person who eats or drinks out of forgetfulness, then this doesn't break a person's fast. But as soon as he remembers, then he stops eating and drinking. إذا المفسد الأول من مفسدات الصيام أو من بطلات الصيام الأكل. أو الشرب عمدا. So the first thing which invalidates a person's fasting is eating or drinking on purpose with intent. وما جرى مجرى الطعام والشراب أي أخذ قطعة من البلاستيك وابتلعها الآن أفطر لأن هذا جرى مجرى الطعام والشراب نعم. And also any other thing which goes the same way as eating or drinking. As an example, a person out on purpose he takes a piece of plastic as an example. And he swallows it. We say this now breaks his fast because it's gone the same way as eating and drinking has. الثاني من المفطرات ما يقوم مقام الطعام والشراب مثل الإبر المغذية الآن تسمى سيروم أو جيليكود أو كذا نعطيها للمرضى. نعم هذا إذا وضع له هذا الإبرة يستغني عن الطعام والشراب حتى لأيام. نعم. And also the, now the third thing which breaks a person's fast. Are those things which are like food and drink, or in the ruling of food and drink? As an example, now we have injections that have nutrition to them, glucose or certain syrups that a person can take as an injection. And if a person wants to take these injections, you can live for a number of days without food. So we say that these types of injections, which provide nutrition to the body, then they are also from those things which invalidate and break a person's fast. مره أخرى. One more time. المفسد الأول أو المبطل الأول من مبطلات الصيام الأكل والشرب عمدا وما جرى مجرى الطعام والشراب. We said the first time is eating and drinking and anything else which goes down the body in the same way. الثاني ما يقوم مقام الطعام والشراب مثل الإبر المغذية. And then other things in the ruling of eating and drinking such as nutritional injections. فقطرة العين مثلا. So therefore eye drops. لا تفطر. Doesn't break a person's fast. حتى ولو وجد شيء من يعني أثر هذه القطرة في حلقه من المرارة أو كذا. نعم. لأن هذا ليس من ال ال المدخل المعتاد للطعام والشراب. ما يمكن نرى إنسان في يوم من الأيام يشرب من عينه. نعم. So eye drops, for example, we don't say that this breaks a person's fast, even if you. Can taste the you know after effect of an eye drop you taste some bitterness in your throat. Still, this doesn't break a person's fast. Why? Because putting things in your eyes isn't the normal way that a person would eat. We never say 
that a person cannot drink through his eyes for example and also those injections which don't have any type of nutrition so uh, you know what you call like anesthetics صحيح. anesthetics أو مثلا الآن عندما يأتي إلى طبيب الأسنان وأراد أن يخلع له سن فيعطيه إبرة مسكنة للألم نعم في اللثة مثلا يصح ولا يفطر بهذا نعم and also if a person wants to go to a dentist and the dentist wants to take a tooth out he gives him a local, a local anesthetic that doesn't break a person's fast نعم من المفطرات كذلك خروج دم الحيض والنفاس فلو نزل دم الحيض والنفاس على المرأة أفطرت نعم and also from those things which invalidate and breaks a person's fast is the bleeding of a woman in terms of her menses so if she's fasting and then she finds herself bleeding then she breaks her fast and she makes افطار لكن لو وجدت المرأة مثلا ألم في بطنها ولم ينزل شيء من الدم إلا بعد أذان المغرب فصيام هذه المرأة صحيح ولا عبرة بهذه الآلام التي جاءتها فالعبرة بنزول دم الحيضة والنفاس نعم but if a woman she finds pain in her stomach or abdomen but she doesn't find any bleeding until after Maghrib then her fast is complete and correct so here the thing that we look at isn't her pains or uh, pains in the stomach but we look at the actual blood itself has she bled from either menses or due to uh, postnatal bleeding in the day of Ramadan. نعم كذلك من المفطرات تعمد إخراج شيء من بطني يعني استقاء فإذا أدخل مثلا أسبع في فيه واستقاء نهار رمضان فقد أفطر خرج بهذا ما لو خرج شيء دون أن يتعمد نعم. And also from those things which break and invalidate a person fast is a person vomiting on purpose like a person who puts their fingers in their mouth in order to in order to vomit on purpose and therefore a person who vomits uh, you know involuntary not on purpose and this doesn't break his fast <coughs> and also a person having a person having cupping f performed on them and a person donating blood <laughs> لتحليل الدم هذا لا إشكال فيه أو جرح مثلا وخرج منه شيء من الدم هذا لا يفطر نعم and as for a person who gives a little bit of blood for blood analysis or has a cut and there's a little bit of bleeding then this doesn't break a person's fast نعم بعد هذا من المفطرات الجماع في نهار رمضان نعم and also after this from the matters which invalidate a person's fasting is sexual intercourse in the day of Ramadan. If a person has sexual intercourse in the day of Ramadan, then upon him is a very heavy or severe expiation. Either freeing a Muslim slave, and if a person is not able to do this, I free a Muslim slave, then fast two months content con, uh, consecutively. <laughs> but these two months, it has to be according to the, to the Islamic Hijri calendar and not the Christian calendar. <laughs> and if a person is not able to fast two months, then feeding 60 poor people. نعم بعد هذا من المفطرات تعمد إخراج المني إذا استمنى فأمنى نعم and then also from the invalidators of a person's fast is somebody um, you know voluntary trying to discharge some semen نعم خرج بهذا ما لو نام مثلا بعد الفجر أو بعد الظهر واحتلم خرج منه مني فهذا uh, لم يفسد صومه والصيام صحيح so, however, if a person, for example, in the day of Ramadan, he goes to sleep and he has a wet dream um, and there is some uh, discharge, then this doesn't break a person's fast. And then after this, we want to mention those things which are recommended, highly recommended for a person to do when fasting.
أو نعيد المخضرات. Or should we repeat the things which invalidate a person's fast? الأكل والشرب عمدًا وما جرى ما جرى الطعام والشراب. We said eating or drinking or anything which goes down the same way. ما يقوم مقام الطعام والشراب كالإبر المغذية. And also those things which have the role or the ruling of eating and drinking, such as nutritional injections. القي عمدًا. A person vomiting on purpose. الحجامة أو التبرع بالدم. Cupping or a person donating blood. خروج دم الحيض والنفاس. And also the bleeding of menses or postnatal bleeding. الجماع. Sexual intercourse. كذلك استمنا يعني تعمد إخراج المانع. And a person voluntarily trying to discharge semen. مستحبات الصيام. Those things which are recommended for a person to do whilst you're fasting. تعجيل الفطر. Then you quickly make fitr in the first time. وتأخير السحور. Meaning breaking fast. And also in terms of having this suhoor meal, then you delay it to the last time possible time. ما لم يدخل وقت الفجر. As long as fajr hasn't entered. والسنة أن يفطر على رطب. الذي يخرج من هذه الشجرة من النخل قبل أن ينضج وقبل أن يصرح للأكل يكون فيه نوع من المرارة فهذه مرحلة ومرحلة المرحلة الثانية يصرح للتخزين هذا هو التمر وما بين المرحلتين مرحلة تسمى بالرطب يكون مثل الفاكهة فنعم and then the sunnah of the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم is that when you're going to break the fast you do it uh, with fresh dates you break the fast having root of fresh dates and that is that there's three types of dates or through three stages in in a date قبل أن يصلح للأكل هذه مرحلة وعندما يصلح للتخزين هذه مرحلة ثانية وبينهما هذه المرحلة كما قلت يعني يكون يعني جديد ويطيب للأكل يكون كالفاكهة يسمى رطب في هذه المرحلة you have a stage in which you can't eat the date or there's some bitterness in the date and then you have another stage whereby you can take the date and you can store it away which is what we have which is called a tamar between these two stages you have a date which is fresh and it's juicy like a fruit and this is called a rutab نعم يصلح للأكل ولا يصلح للتخزين وسط بين المرحلتين and this type of date the fresh date you can eat it and it has a sweetness to it but at the same time you can't store it away نعم السنة أن يفطر على رطب. So the Sunnah of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم that which is recommended is for a person to break his fast with a رطب these fresh dates. فإن لم يجد فعلى تم. And if a person cannot find them then dry dates. فإن لم يجد فعلى ما. And if a person cannot find dates then by drinking water. فإن لم يجد فعلى ما وجد من طعام كالبرتقال أو الموز أو التفاح أو اللحم أو ما إلى ذلك. And if a person cannot find neither water nor dates, then whatever a person finds, whether it's an orange or an apple or anything else. فإن لم يجد شيء من الطعام ودخل وقت المغرب والسنة أن يعجل بالفطر ينوي الفطر وإذا نوى الفطر أفطر. نعم. And if a person can't find any food at all and the Maghrib time has come and we know that the recommended act is to break the fast as soon as possible then a person in his mind he makes the intention to break the fast and his fast is broken and also the sunnah in terms of making suhoor the morning meal the pre-dawn meal is a person does it upon dry dates and also increasing in the recitation of the Quran and praying Salat al-Taraweeh with the Muslims in congregation in the Masajid and a person he increases in his dua and also a person performing Umrah in Ramadan and also if a person insults a person who is fasting or curses him or swears at him then he says in his time indeed I am fasting and also as has been mentioned by the Prophet somebody uh, increasing in charity during the month of Ramadan 
يشتاق في كل رمضان في في جميع الوقت في النهار سواء كان بعد الزوال او قبل الزوال قبل الظهر او بعد الظهر لا اشكال نعم and also a person uh, using the miswak or brushing one's teeth cleans one, one's teeth this can be done as much as one wants inside ramadan outside ramadan before dhuhr after dhuhr it doesn't matter وكذلك يعني المشاركه في تقديم افطار الصائم للصائمين نعم. And also participating in or helping in breaking other people's fast or providing food to break other people's fast. نعم. يكره للصائم أمور. نعم. And then there are certain things which are disliked for a fasting person to do. ذوق الطعام لغير حاجة. A person tasting some food without any necessity. والمرأة إذا كانت احتاجت لذوق الطعام فهذا من مباحات الصيام. If a woman is cooking and she has a need to taste a little bit of food then this is something which is permitted whilst fasting and therefore it's permitted for a person who is fasting to taste a little bit of food due to a, a necessity and also having a shower making ghusl permitted نعم. And a person cooling themselves, whether it's under the AC or, for example, in, a, in uh, under the shade. وكذلك ليس من المفطرات بلع الريق يعني أجمع هذا الريق وأبتلعه لا إشكال في هذا لأنه لم يدخل شيء إلى جوفه لأن بعض الناس هذان الله إياه في رمضان يعني يخاف ويظن أن هذا من الفطرات وتجده دائما يبصر نعم. And also a person um, swallowing saliva this doesn't break a person's fast sometimes you see certain people and they think that if I swallow my uh, saliva this is going to break my fast and therefore you keep spitting so this doesn't break a person's fast because you haven't put something new in your mouth uh, لأنه لم يدخل شيء إلى جوفه لكن هذا من المحرمات ولا يفطر بهذا And again from those actions which is impermissible but at the same time it doesn't break a person's fast is a person swallowing his mucus ويحرم عليه ولا يفطر بهذا فعل وقول كل محرم فعل وقول كل محرم نعم And every action or every statement which is not permissible for us, which is a sin, then during Ramadan it is impermissible and a sin, but it doesn't break a person's fast. Ghiba, Backbiting, wa, wa namima, slandering, and these are the actions. So by this, we've mentioned or we've studied uh, an overview of overview or a summary of most of that which relates to fasting. Uh, that's the obligatory fast. Now we go to the voluntary fasts. A person fasting Mondays and Thursdays, this is recommended. And fasting on Monday is more emphasized and more highly recommended than fasting on Thursdays. And also, a person fasting three consecutive days every month. Whether it's the beginning of, of the month, or the middle of the month, or the end of the month. And the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and that which is recommended, that these three consecutive days of fasting in the month should be done on the days of the full moon, and they are of the Islamic month, the fourth, the thirteenth, the fourteenth, and the fifteenth of the Islamic month. Siyam yawm or fitr yawm. And also, a person fasting one day but breaking the fast and not fasting the other day. Siyam yawm arafa li ghair al haj. And also, from the highly recommended days of fasting is. A person fasting on the day of Arafah as long as he is not doing Hajj. كذلك صيام صيام يوم العاشر مع التاسع والحادي عشر من المحرم من محرم نعم. And also fasting the tenth of Muharram, but 
but combining it with fasting the 9th or the 11th. Siyam al tisat ayyam min dhul hujjah li dukhulha tahat al a'mal al salihah. Hada idha lam yarid shay fi siyam hadhi al ayyam. Tadkhul dhimna al a'mal al salihah. Wa an thabata shay fi takhsis hadhi al ayyam bis siyam yakun hadha يعني مع الأول نور على نور نعم and also a person fasting the first nine days of ذو الحجة and this doesn't mean that there's a specific evidence that we should fast on these days but because we're meant to do good deeds and therefore fasting is one of the good deeds but if there is a particular evidence then it enters into this صيام ستة أيام من شوال and also fasting six days of Shawwal, i.e. the month after Ramadan. لمن أتم صيام شهر رمضان. For the person who has completed fasting Ramadan. فلو بقي عليها أيام من رمضان يعني قد أفطر فيها لا بد من القضاء أولا ثم بعد هذا يصوم ستة من شوال. So if a person has days left over from Ramadan that you have to make قضاء, then first you have to make up these fasts and then afterwards you can make up the six. You can fast the six days of Shawwal. And it's better for a person to fast them consecutively. However, if we if he splits them or divides them, then there's nothing wrong with this. The أول الشهر يعني ثاني أيام شهر شوال. And it's better for a person to fast these six days of Shawwal at the beginning of the of of the month, i.e., beginning from the second day of Shawwal. نعم. ولو أخر لا إشكال. and if a person delays them in Shawwal there's no problem. نعم. ثم كذلك صيام شهر محرم وشهر شعبان لكن لا يتم هذا الشهر يعني كامل بالصيام. and also it's recommended for a person to fast the month of محرم and the month of شعبان but he doesn't complete the full month like رمضان. نعم. بعد هذا نذكر الصيام المحرم. and then after this we're going to mention that type of fasting which is not permissible, impermissible type of fasting. A person fasting on the day of the two Eids. And also a person, a person fasting a day of doubt and that is the last day of Sha'ban before Ramadan. من أجل الاحتياط فهو آثم نسأل الله عافية السلام. For example, you have a person and he's not sure of whether Ramadan is going to enter or not, and therefore he says, "I'll fast the last day of the month of Shaaban, so I know that I've covered Ramadan." If a person does this, then he is sinning. لكن إن كان من عادته أن يصوم وافق هذا اليوم آخر يوم مثلاً من شوال من يوم اثنين وكان من عادة صيام يوم الاثنين وصام من أجل السنة في صيام يوم الاثنين فلا إشكال في هذا الإشكال في أن يصوم يوم الشك احتياطا نعم let's say it's from a person's normal practice that he fasts on this day for example the normal practice of one of you is that you fast every Monday and every Thursday and the Monday just so happens to be the last day of شعبان in this situation a person can fast the last day of شعبان with the intention of that is his normal day of fasting, like he fasts every Monday or Thursday, not with the intention that this is a fasting of a day of doubt. And also, it, it's impermissible for a person to fast the fasting of a dahar, i.e., fasting every single day. And also a person fasting the days of Tashriq and they are the days of the 11th, 12th and the 13th of Dhul Hijjah it's not permitted for a person to fast these days if he's making Hajj unless he hasn't found a sacrificial animal. And also the opinion of those people, those scholars who hold it impermissible for a person who is uh, making Hajj to fast on the day of Arafah. Some scholars say that is disliked, whereas other scholars say it is impermissible.
so this is what relates to a per, uh, the impermissible types of fasting. Now the only issue remains which it, with us is a person singling out Friday to fast. If a person wants to make a voluntary fast and he singles out Friday and he fasts just on that Friday, what's the ruling of this? So singling out Friday to fast just this day alone, then this is something which is prohibited. And if a person wants to fast on Friday alone, then he should combine with it fasting on a Thursday and Friday or a Friday and Saturday. Sheikh Ibn Uthameen rahimahullah he mentions that some people they have a holiday on Friday. And he wants to fast on a Friday because naturally it's his holiday. Sheikh Ibn Uthameen says that no person, uh, there's, no, there's no problem for this person to fast on a Friday because it's his holiday. So this is because his intention is I'm only fasting on this day because it's my holiday, not because it's a special day of Friday. مع الصيام الاعتكاف لأن الاعتكاف هو لزوم التعبد لله بلزوم المسجد نعم The scholars they mention in the chapter of fasting they also mention the chapter of الاعتكاف The meaning of الاعتكاف is لزوم المساجد A person remaining within the masajid with the intention of worshipping Allah and seeking closeness to Allah. فحكم الاعتكاف أنه سنة مؤكدة واضب عليه النبي عليه الصلاة والسلام وكذلك الصحابة وأمهات المؤمنين رضوان الله عليهم. نعم. And the ruling of a person making اعتكاف is that it is a highly recommended and emphasized sunnah because the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he should do this consistently year on year and also the companions and also the wives of the Prophet ﷺ. And a person performs the i'tikaf in the last days of Ramadan, the last 10 days of Ramadan. And the i'tikaf is done in the masajid. So what are those things which break or invalidate a person's i'tikaf? Sexual intercourse. <coughs> And a person yeah. also consistently all the time leaving the masjid. This again breaks a person's i'tikaf because we said i'tikaf is a person maintaining, uh, remaining in the masjid. And the objective, the real objective behind a person performing i'tikaf is hoping to obtain uh, the day of or finding the day of Laylatul Qadr. So a person, the person who is performing itikaf, he frees himself up just for the worship of Allah. And especially at night. And especially the last third of the night. And a person, he increases in his supplications. And it's better. It is better for a person to fast. Uh, it is better for a person to supplicate with the supplication that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam advised Umm al-Mu'minin Aisha radhiyallahu anha to do. So he makes this du'a. Allahumma anna ka'afu wa tuhubu al-afwa, fa'afu anni. Allahumma ayya Allah. So Allahumma ay o Allah, anna ka'afu al-afwa, yani. You are the one who, who has a la'afu. You are the one who pardons pardons the sins and overlooks the sins. To hibb al-afwa, you love pardoning. And therefore, in this wording is an affirmation of the attribute of love for this, uh, of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has the attribute of loving others and loving things. However, this love is befitting to the majesty of Allah. So 
And therefore, pardon me. I pardon me in my body, pardon me in my wealth, pardon me in my health, pardon me in my children and my family, pardon me in everything. I in all types of goodness. And therefore, if a person strives to find supplications, he'll never find the supplications like the supplications of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. أكمل اعتكاف يكون في المسجد الثلاثة في المسجد الحرام والمسجد النبو والمسجد الأقصى. So the best type of اعتكاف, the most perfect type of اعتكاف is that which is done in the three holy masajid. نعم. ويصح الاعتكاف في كل مسجد تقام فيه الجماعة. And it is permitted for a person or it is correct for a person to perform اعتكاف in every masjid in which there is a congregational prayer. And when, when a person is performing i'tikaf, then he doesn't go out to follow the janaza, he doesn't go out to go visit an ill person. But it is permitted for a person to leave the masjid for a small amount of time due to a particular necessity. Like for example, if a person wants to leave the masjid, leave it have to go for ghusl, shower and then come back. If a person, if a person doesn't have another person who brings food for him, then a person can go to the nearest place to get enough food and then come back. As for the night of Eid, i.e. the night before the day of Eid, then according to the agreement of the scholars, it's not permitted for a person to perform itikaf because the night before Eid is now, it's not Ramadan now. من المعتكف إما بإتمام شهر رمضان أن يتم ثلاثين يوم أي بعد صلاة المغرب نعم so a person leaves اعتكاف بعد بعد صلاة الفجر من يوم الثلاثين يخرج هذا على ما كان عليه النبي عليه الصلاة والسلام نعم so a person should leave اعتكاف after the fajr prayer on the thirtieth day of Ramadan هذا إذا كان شهر رمضان ثلاثين يوم That's if Ramadan is 30 days. وإذا كان رمضان 29 يوم يخرج وقت الإعلان. نعم. And if وفي الغالب يكون الإعلان مع صلاة المغرب. And نعم. if it's 29 days, then a person should leave once it's been announced that it is Eid tomorrow and after this is announced at Maghrib time. أكمل اعتكاف أن يعتكب العشر الأواخر كاملة. And the best type of اعتكاف is to perform اعتكاف in the full last 10 days of Ramadan. وإذا وجد من نفسه نشاط وأراد أن يعتكف أكثر من عشر الأكثر من عشر الأواخر ليس له ذلك لأن السنة على ما يذكر الشيخ بن عثيمين رحمه الله تعالى أن تكون في هذه الأيام فقط نعم الشيخ بن الشيخ بن عثيمين رحمه الله he mentions that if a person finds a desire or energy to perform itikaf more than ten days then he shouldn't do so because because the Sunnah of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم according to what Sheikh Ibn Uthman mentions is that person fasts the last ten days. ولم يستطع على person makes itikaf for the last ten days. نعم إن لم يستطع على itikaf على عشرة أيام يعتكف ما استطاع. And if a person doesn't have the ability to make itikaf for the full of the last ten days, then he can make itikaf for however many days or however less days he he is able to do so. وأقل الاعتكاف يوم ليلة. And the minimum amount of itikaf that a person can make is one day and one night.